Hey, everybody. Huh? This is, we're missing somebody here. C is putting the kids to bed, and uh, hopefully he'll be joining us shortly. But in the meantime, you guys, he's kind of like holding the show behind anyways, I would say. So who, who needs him? Uh, we have a very excellent, excellent dram club tonight. We've been looking forward to this for basically our whole lives, it feels like, because uh, Jim Beam in general has been our easily our biggest purchase. We will probably talk about that in more detail later, but it's just so good. And so we're so happy to have Ray Daniels here with us right now. Why don't you kind of introduce yourself and talk to the people for a second? Sure. Just make up for the time when C's not around. Yeah, I'll, sure. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be the I'll be the filler. I'll be the filler. It's cool, man. I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Ray. You can it's on the screen. Um, I'm Beef Tories American Whiskey Ambassador in Canada, so I get to take care of our whole American whiskey portfolio, which is really cool. Um, I do live out here in Ontario and haven't been able to travel around as much as well at all, really, yeah. um, for the last year or so, as none of us probably have. Um, but like this is great, like being able to do stuff like this. This is awesome, right? Like you can still kind of get to. It feels. I think this has become the normal way of sitting and having a drink now, which is weird. It is weird. It's weird, but it's but also kind of nice. I kind of love the idea that you always can stumble home to your own bed at the end there's, of the night. There's no fighting for cabs. There's no. Yeah, you know, maybe you should... just reach that age where, like, I would always rather stay at my own. Bed <laughs> just be you know? inside. Yeah. Some people yeah. are like, you know, how are you taking this whole thing? It's like. I get to be inside. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> Not cool. Probably cool wouldn't be the word I'd use, but <laughs> it's, it's, it's at least we have our conveniences. I guess at, you could say. Exactly. You got to look for, for silver linings here. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And there's, yeah. there's been plenty. That's what we, me and C were talking earlier today. Like I guarantee a lot of people that in the first five months or so of the pandemic, they just drank a heck of a lot more than they had before. And they were either pretty vocal about it, or it was kind of like a hidden thing, I, I think. You know, right? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. the quiet ones you got to be worried for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Be suspicious, for sure. Um, yeah, so uh, we are going to do the the lineup tonight. And we do. We might as well tell the people right away that we have a bottle giveaway, which is excellent. So we're going to just show you. Oh, we have another surprise. Oh, Hey, there he is. All right. The sh it's really a party now. The show can go on. I guess the show must go on. Yes, exactly. Sure. Yeah, that's that's exactly what we were saying while you weren't around. We were like, oh. Yeah, I'm sure you're saying all We miss them so now. much. Like, <laughs> how I carry the show. Yeah. yeah we're we're very sure. Yeah, sure. Let's, let's 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 go with that. Yeah, sure. I'm sure you're <laughs> super kind. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Sorry, well. you were talking about the Well, we the were kind of just we, I'll give you a recap, especially to our new viewers, because we have quite a few uh, viewers popping in now. Um, we got Ray Daniel here from Jim Beam, the whole lineup. We got five to taste and one to give away. This is the Wintney bottle tonight. This is Old Tub. Very cool. This Somebody was, like... was hacking on my cardboard job earlier. <laughs> That's professional. That's like professional. this show's on a budget, I like it. people. <laughs> I like it. Well, we were kind of talking before you arrived that uh, everyone... This is kind of like the new way to drink whiskey with friends, but mm -hmm. in a way, like we're kind of lucky because we've been doing, we've been practiced for the last four or five years of drinking whiskey on camera, you know? Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. The comfort level, the, but you know what? The funny thing is like, this is totally natural to me, but then if I try and do this with my family, it's super weird. And yeah. <laughs> How come I can't have the same conversation? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I need a drink. Here. Yeah. You better, let's, I've, let's I've, pour something here. I've, what do you recommend we pour first? Oh, you know what? Uh, I'm trying to think through what we uh, what we had in the lineup there. You know, so, I always okay, so I always love to. I was just going to say, members got all of these in the mail. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we've cool. Got the Jim Beam Black, so they're going to be tasting along with us tonight. We got the Old Tub, as we showed you, as our bottom giveaway, but we're not tasting it because we didn't give that one. So away. We drank all of it. <laughs> we've got the new release oh, of yeah. Basil Basil. Uh, yeah. Ask him, Basil. So I had this conversation like two days ago, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's re it's bothering me. It's really bothering me. So, right. Us too. so I'm going to vent here. No. Yeah, so 
we always refer to it as basil. Everybody, like the, everybody, the distillery, the distillers, like everybody. But he was of English descent. Mm. And people in England would say basil. Oh, yeah. Right? That sounds way more English. Yeah. Yeah, like a faulty towers kind of thing. Basil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so whatever you want to say. <laughs> So we've really gained no information. We've gained nothing. And okay, listen, perfect. you 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 got like the forty second version of it. This was like a two hour conversation. <laughs> right. But, but do you know what's kind of funny? It's like in the uh, the bourbon world, it's kind of nice to have something that you don't know how to pronounce. Like in Scotland, everything is yeah. Like the first time I saw Boona Haben, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not even gonna try that. Yeah, I'm well, convinced there's a bunch of Scotch people going, yeah, let's let's see them figure this one out. All right, <laughs> Basil. Um, so we got those two. Okay, we got those two. We've got the Maker's Mark, ah, the classic, yes. uh, delicious. Kind of a black sheep in the uh, Jim Beam lineup, though, because I never, I never actually associated Maker's Mark with so, Beam Suntory. Separate distillery. Yeah, uh, operated completely separate. So like, it's under the Beam Suntory umbrella, but not the Jim Beam umbrella. Ah, okay. If that makes okay. any sort of sense, yeah. And then we've got the Knob Creek 9, the new release with the melted bottle. Super warpy, melty VHS on your <laughs> dashboard kind of a bottle. Actually, yeah. <laughs> and then the very cool uh, oh. new bottling of the Baker 7 with the huge, like, just chonker. So oh, yeah. the So the old Baker 7 was small batch, but it wasn't yep. single barrel, right? Yeah. Did we get okay? Um, here's one thing too. Did do we always get the same, or did we always get the same batch in Canada? Like, um, it seemed like every single Booker's in Canada was all the same batch, and yeah. like we picked up, <laughs> we picked up a bottle of Baker Seven like four years after the first one we picked up, and it was from the same batch. We're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> It's a it, it's it's a quiet cellar, uh, which is well, but which is weird. It's actually my, my are ginormous, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like you know, as kind of you know, Fred tends to say, right? Like you know, what what is small batch? It, it's relative to whatever you make, right? Like if your batches are normally a hundred thousand barrels, then ninety thousand is small, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> ours would be a little like not as big. Like for bakers, we're looking anywhere from one hundred and fifty to two twenty ish barrels. For okay. a batch, uh, which you know, when you consider Jim Beam White, say for example, would be about 1,200, 1,400 barrels, that's kind of the, the difference you're seeing, there, right? right? Uh, um, the, and, on and the last time I read a label on our batches, batches are made like, well, how many batches batch come going, to Canada? Like it's, three or four batches going at once, it cycles continuously. Yeah, okay. Um, like we're not making it every single day, but you know, it's yeah. it's, the, it's the same mash bill we're using for a lot of our products, right? So it all really comes down to warehouse location as opposed to like making it um well, and percentages and things like that but i mean just the just speaking of the new baker seven so this one that we got was the eight year six month i yeah. just saw i saw one um at bc liquor that was eight years eight months i'm wondering what's the oldest one anybody's seen on the shelf there these should be grabbed up Whew, um i the oldest one that i've seen was actually probably that batch you've got in your hand there. Okay. Um, like the, the thing about it now with, so the Baker's seven, the, the first bottle you showed there, the kind of the older bottle. Yeah. So that's actually being phased out. Yeah. Uh, that won't be available anymore. And we've switched the entire thing over to a single barrel program. So cool. now what we're pretty much looking for is just barrels that hit that point. Mm -hmm. Right. So a lot of the time, sure, it's a single barrel program. So you're going to have times where there's, slight variances in, in flavor it's it's sure. just, it's going to happen uh which is also kind of the appeal for a lot of single barrels yeah i mean that's what's nice about it really. so you, what you're saying yeah. is that the, the old matter. the old baker seven is now a collector item you gotta scoop them all up with the black wax actually you know <laughs> i've i've been kind of doing that like i've got a few squirreled away in different provinces i mean like i need some it's my favorite thing <laughs> we make my very well, favorite thing that we make is bakers so yeah it's, it's, but the new single barrels that. are really fantastic we really enjoyed this, like really. And Trenny had previously picked the other one, um, the original one, when we we did a video a few years back and it was like, what's the best Jim Beam small batch collection? We took the whole small batch collection and we did them blind. And then we, right. we picked, picked our favorite and Trenny actually picked the Baker 7 as his favorite blind. Yeah. 
we both thought it was Booker's when we tasted it. <laughs> it's it's pretty incredible. Yeah. It's uh, you know, it, it very much kind of, you know, if if you met Baker Beam, it it's him in a in a bottle, right? Like, and and Baker's like the most lovable guy in the face of the earth. Yeah. So like, it's it's just one of those bottles, kind of the same as Booker's. You know, I mean, I I never met Booker. But from what I've heard, like Booker's was quite literally the embodiment of Booker himself, mm-hmm. uh, right? Like that big, bold, boisterous kind of flavor to it. Whereas Baker's is a little bit more on the calmer side, a little quieter, but still full of character and full of life. And Booker's yeah. just—he's just super in your face all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was. He uh, for, for, a punch from him out. Yeah, I mean, from from what I've seen, he was quite a yeah boisterous guy. <laughs> life and soul of the party. His book, I tell you what, he's got a, a book. Uh, I think it's called The Big Man of Jim Beam. It was like written with him. Um, but man, some of the stories in that are hilarious. He was a uh, character. Character. Yeah, right uh, I'm, I'll, I'll see if I got an extra copy right here. I'll send it out to you guys. It's really worth oh, the awesome. words to read. It's really good. Let's give it away tonight. <laughs> so <laughs> let's get a, a drink in our glass yeah, here well, because we... we got five to go through. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So let's is this, just do oh, that. this is your phone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's okay. I can always. Okay. So what do you suggest we pour first tonight? I always love starting a night with Jimmy Black. I yeah. think that's like just a perfect so, starter, starter a night. We, I kind of mentioned this earlier, but like this is the number one purchase for me personally of any whiskey on the planet. Well, and I buy it. <laughs> I don't want to say like how many times per week. <laughs> Seems like a few times for me. Um, well, the thing about it is, is that you sent. This is the first time, almost in history of Dram Club, where I we we actually aren't drinking the same sample that everyone else is because we already finished that bottle off and we had to buy another one. <laughs> we it happens. It yeah. It's okay. It happens. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, it does. Um, but it's, yeah, that's what it's there for, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And you know what? It's it's a funny whiskey because like. I'd say if you were to go down to the Jim Beam Distillery in Claremont and like survey every single employee on the the campus, I'd I'd feel confident in saying that eighty percent of them would say Jim Beam Black is their favorite whiskey. Yeah, so it's, it's just so one thing that's nice about it is is it's held its value for you know okay the average person to a degree. It's gone up lately. No, but but anyway, I got a comment though. I want to okay. say sure. My favorite thing, or one of the things, yet also one of the things that I don't understand in this world, is that BC Liquor Store constantly has Jim Beam Black Label going on sale for less than Jim Beam White. And I just, I'm like, this is amazing, because anybody that knows anything about bourbon would be gobbling that up. And, And they do it regularly. And I'm like, yes, thank you. It's like, yeah, it's, and and that also is one of the reasons that this is the most common purchase probably Mm -hmm. but not only that like there is the cost factor i think for a lot of people 100 100 but but you're actually getting crazy value in the glass with jim beam black i think bang for your buck like you know take my kind of job out of the picture i think as as a, a drinker i'd venture to say bang for your buck the best whiskey on the market in canada it's, yeah, that's you're it's right you're, up there here. You're not wrong there. I would agree. So, um, so we all know and love this. The people we haven't actually even talked to our so say hello to some people. Talk, yeah, let's okay. Comment to okay. back to some of these guys we, because um, they're probably all pouring this and they all know and love it. Okay, so so yeah. we got this is Dram Club. We've got Dram Clubbers on tonight. Uh, Graham Young is here. Uh, Carol Smith is one of our newest Dram Club members. Hey, actually. Carol local uh a local here right. um tim dietrich uh dmc ky uh greg latimer yeah a bunch of dram clubbers here um chris beaton and uh cars and cubes jason coates um so anybody just know that uh we see there's a bunch of people on but we can only say hello if you say hello first because we can't see your name until you're in the comment section so and ray can see the comments also so feel free at any point to interject with one of them just roast me half the time they're more interesting than we are (laughs) question here question says is it a conflict of interest that your last name's daniel and you work for jim beam (laughs) no it's, it's it's a it's a moment of pride yeah yeah it's an in your face yeah okay um 
Yeah. So, <sighs> so yeah, the Jim Beam. Have you poured yourself one there? Yeah. Got it right here. Perfect. Yeah, it's just so clap. It's it's kind of the to me the what I see it is is like the main staple component of just the house style of a lot of Jim Jim Beam products the in general. Essence. Like the the essence, the spirit is there with like that walnut kind of like slightly honeyed brown sugar. Yeah, and weird you know, I, oak tang. I, I think for for me, the thing what you mean back is that you know it's. Oh. The first moment really in, in our portfolio of whiskeys where you can actually, this right here is the moment the wood takes over. Mm, yeah. Right. And like, you know, one of my favorite things to do is, you know, you look at say Jim Beam White, right. And, you know, we, we kind of generally tend to keep the whiskeys that go into that blend about four, four and a half years, not really any, any higher than five years. Right. Cause we want some of the grainy qualities still around. And after about five years, the grain kind of dips and the wood really starts to take over. And that's kind of where we start to pull the whiskey from for Jim Beam Black, right? And anywhere from say that five, five and a half to about eight years. Yeah. So it's kind of cool just to see that moment where the wood is officially taken over and really kind of starting to show you what your what what we come to know as being like the bourbon flavor. You so know, it's the does, moment that that comes into existence. It's kind of cool. What, what does um you know, obviously the whole extra aged thing has changed over the years. What does extra aged mean today? Um, so it kind of took a little bit of, it's been through a bunch of name changes. Yeah. Um, and there was, there was also territorial name changes as well. Cause like at the oh. same, at the same time in some parts of the world, there was a Jimmy Black was an eight year old in other mm. parts. It was a six year old. Um, and then due to, you know, a bunch of different reasons they they uh pulled the age statement off it and it was originally just i think it was like jim beam xa and then mm -hmm. that went to extra age and that kind of just stuck um i think it was called double aged at one point or something like so that. it was the eight-year-old was double aged because okay. our jim beam white was you know pretty much four years right yeah and then the six year was actually called triple aged because oh. the legal minimum requirement is two yeah. years, yeah. right? So right. it's three times a two. It was like um, double was more than triple. That's <laughs> very tricky. Yeah, but I, I think for for us, you know, really, kind of the extra age is the one that I think best uh, describes what it is, right? Yeah. It's um, just longer, <laughs> it, and that's really it, right? You know, kind of. Well, but it and does a, a three percent percentage pipe is yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it gives a little bit more of a roundness to it, brings the wood into kind of that's really what this focus is, right? Like, you know, the Jim Beam White, the focus on making sure we still have the grain there. The Jim Beam Black is really focusing on the wood. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like we, like I said, it's phenomenally, phenomenally, you yeah. know, uh, I can't no. say abominable either. Abominable. So. Um, honestly, I'm getting a little bit of like black cherry almost on it right mm. now. It's really, really nice. It's, it's funny because. I really love the fact that I don't dissect it too often anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, like it can become an everyday sipper where you're, you kind of do have those moments where you go, holy crap, this is amazing. So actually I have a bit of a story. I was in sure. Southeast Asia when this whole pandemic hit mm -hmm. and um, I uh, was in, in Indonesia for the first four weeks and then I flew to Thailand and in Indonesia, like the whiskey is just, really just terrible um or they have a bottle of jim beam for like 110 dollars and things like right, that. So okay it's like, yeah it's like outrageous prices which, of which you bought <laughs> which was but still so no i hadn't tried any anything until i went to thailand and i like found a shop that had so many whiskeys but i had literally just landed and i didn't know what the uh currency rate, rate was or whatever like i didn't know what 550 bot was really <laughs> but anyways so i just found jim beam was like screw it i'm gonna buy this i took it back to my room i filmed the the experience and you can see in that video how genuinely thankful i was to have like, <laughs> such a amazing quality whiskey like and, and at the time i was like this is the best thing i've ever tasted in my life you know and and it came in a box and it came in a box which is cool jim oh beam. you had the real fancy stuff okay yeah yeah Jim Beam White in a box is awesome. Yeah. So anyway, point being, um, it's 
when you actually have a chance to like dissect it and get into it, you realize how good is it is along with just being like an everyday sipper. But, and, and we, we were talking to, um, uh, James Lester last week when we did the live stream of sons of Vancouver. And he was just saying like, it's amazing how good some of these large distilleries, like base model is like just yeah. the basic bourbon from something like Jim Beam is like, it's actually, when you compare it to other stuff that's out there, it's actually really amazing. Oh. We're, we're a Jim Beam fanboys. It's just the way it is. Like people are going to be like, Oh, shut up. You can like, just say fan. Like, it's, sorry. you know, it's, it's easy to, it's easy to discount some of the big producers, right? It's, it's easy, right? You know, it's everywhere. They're generally not massively expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it, you look and see the, you know, the, the beam family, for example, you know, it's taken them 226 years to get to a point where they can have a great cheap whiskey yeah. on the shelf, well, right? Like, you know, it, that's not an overnight thing, right? Like it, it takes a while. And adding to that point, like the fact that it's made in such mass quantity to keep a consistent yeah. profile yeah. is unbelievable. I, I can tell you right now, like it's, it's one thing that is pe people are shocked a lot of the time when, especially when they come down and do some, um, some tours our distillery and stuff, but like the care and detail that goes into making Jim Beam white yeah. is but, like, I would venture to say, and it's tough because if you say this, it seems like you don't put as much care into everything care goes into everything we make, but there's probably more of a, a fine detail spent to making sure Jim Beam white is perfect yeah. all the time. Right. Yeah, because I mean, that's, yeah. that's how we do everything else. Right. Like, um, what like where do you even get that much corn? Like holy <laughs> shit, that's a lot of fucking corn. We got a guy. We got a corn guy. Yeah, we know a guy. Yeah. We know a guy. Good, good, yeah. good. You, you keep your secrets. Yeah, just wait, you don't. You have a corn guy. Come on. <laughs> you can see his field from space, but still. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He just has one of those tarps over the top. Yeah, you know yeah. those like camo see-through ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like oh, there's nothing there. See-through camo. <laughs> Okay, so like okay, almost, let's let's crush this um, because we got to move on. It's we're we don't have to move on, I guess, but let's let's do it. I'm okay, ready. We're gonna try and do this around an hour, right? Like, yeah, people kind of fade out after an hour. An hour of us, is, it happens. Is, is <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, okay. What do you suggest we try now? That's like a shot and and our uh, our dram clubbers. We want you to oh yeah have your that. input on all the drinks we're having tonight. By the way, um, oh yeah, for sure. Okay, so here's a question. Hey, Ray, what's the secret to Jim Beam's classic note, which is the nuttiness, <laughs> is what he's saying. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> okay, so that's genuinely a great question. Mm -hmm. It's one that comes up often and that I hate getting because <laughs> I'm, I'm allergic to peanuts, so mm -hmm. I don't know what everyone's talking about. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know that smell. I don't know that taste. Mm -hmm. So... It's one of those like weird. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Um, I would venture to say, if whenever you have notes that stick out across any um, portfolio, as opposed to like just one particular expression, nine out of ten times it's the yeast. Yeah. Okay. Because like, yeah. you know, I mean, when you look at us, we're we're only really using two yeast strains across our entire portfolio. Okay. And one of those is going towards like OGD and Basil Hayden, and then the other one is for everything else. Um, and they all do have those very, very common uh, aromas about them. So, I mean, the yeast is really what's going to keep it. It's that kind of family flavor and family aroma. So it's not the addition of uh, heaps of peanuts then? Well, I mean, it helps, but like, no, let's just see. <laughs> They're just strained over time. Um, I actually think, um, to me, it's more of a walnut thing. Yeah, it's like, peanuts, it's but... more walnutty for sure. But, uh, but uh, nut, there's, there is a nut to it for sure. So yeah, and I get it a lot. And like, I've... I th I think I might know what it smells like, but I mean I've never been brave enough to stick my nose in a bag of peanuts and see what happens. Are you are you allergic but, to all nuts? Uh, no, no. I mean I'm fine with you two. Yes. <laughs> are you familiar with these? You like nuts? that one? It these nuts. Is that what you were going for? I figured there was something along those lines coming. <laughs> the whole thing was leading up to these nuts. Um, and for that, I applaud you. Yeah, um, <laughs> but point being, if you can have walnuts at some point, you should you should try a walnut. Go. Yeah, you give them yeah. go if you get a chance. Just, just yeah, like bring a big bag of nuts into like a hospital one day. Yeah, exactly. It's bring like, ER. come here, I'm gonna need no you close. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, Actually, my friend, when uh, he was bringing his daughter to try foods for the first time, because he's super paranoid, he'd drive to the hospital and then give peanut butter <laughs> in, the parking lot. in the parking lot in the car. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's really amazing. I love that. Yeah, because he's just he was super paranoid about everything. Anyway. Ah, good story. Okay, um, let's move we, on. Sorry, are, we, are you thinking we're doing basil? basil, I, basil? Yeah, I, th I think that would probably be a, a, a good next step. Because I think, you know, if, if we go straight to makers, it's going to be a little bit too much for disparity in the alcohol yeah. content. So, yeah. yeah, I think wow. going to a... So we had a we had an interesting conversation, the two of us, because... Um, um, basil, Basil Hayden... Fucking now, it's, I'm, now it's... I can't yeah. know, really, it's in my head. Um, we were trying to figure out, like, what... Who is the target audience for Basil Hayden? Because we were like, it's... Like more so the base, the base model of, of Basil Hayden, because you're like, okay, it's a Jim Beam product. It's 40%. It's higher price. Like, but it's got no it's age. 10 years statement. old. Well, the other one. I'm talking about oh, the base sorry, one. Other one. Let's yeah, talk about yeah. the base one for a sec, because it's yeah. no age statement. Like, what is it bringing to the table, I guess, or who is it focused on that's going to pay, you know, Again, back to how great Jim Beam White is. This is more of a more of a compliment to Jim Beam White being at twenty five bucks, and then you have Basil Hayden at forty percent no age statement at fifty bucks. So, and we ended up we landed on it's the gift giving market. It's people that want to, to give something unique that is a little more expensive. But before you answer this, I just want to say something he said earlier. Oh, is oh, sorry. Is this is one of the only ones that has a different yeast strain. So okay, 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 okay. Sorry, go on, go ahead. So, I I think with basil, I mean, there's there's a couple of different approaches to it, right? Like I think from a it's it's our approachable whiskey, right? It's our universally approachable whiskey, yeah. right? Like when we when we look at just the small batch collection itself as an entity, right? Basil, then you've got a jump to Knob Creek, then to B B Bakers, and then to Bookers, right? Yeah. Knob Creek Bakers and Bookers are strong, big, bold, kind of what we call bourbon drinkers bourbon, yeah. right? But, you know, when you look at when this these were rolling out, right, like 1992 for Basil Hayden and Knob Creek and Bakers, oh, okay. right? This this was kind of the really the, the start of not just the bourbon revival, but like the whiskey revival, really, uh, especially yeah. within North America. And, you know, the majority of people, their only real understanding of starting to drink whiskey was drinking things like Irish and Scotch whiskey, right? Hmm. And when you really, there's always going to be exceptions to the rule, but when you really dissect Irish and Scotch whiskey, they're generally lighter spirit bases, right? And when you look at bourbon, it's generally richer, heavier, and bolder. And sometimes mm -hmm. that can be a bit much for somebody who's just coming straight in, has never drank a bourbon before, and they get hit with this. You know, imagine somebody hands you a Booker's for your first bourbon, right? That's a lot to take, and will probably make you not drink bourbon again for a long time. Yeah. Whereas Baker's kind of has that ability to have that lightness to it and kind of that delicate note that you get with particularly with Irish whiskeys, but also with a lot of like, uh, you know, that real space ID quality that you get. Yeah. Um, but it has that kind of that delicate uh, feel to it, mm -hmm. but also still manages to bring across the traditional bourbon qualities that you're going to expect now when you start to move into heavier spirits, higher ABVs. So it's, you know, in a way, the stepping stone into yeah. the world of premium bourbons you're right it is a great gifting whiskey but i think for that reason as well right because yeah, i mean yeah. so you know, it's just highly inviting right yeah i mean well, you know if, if you don't know what somebody drinks you know they drink whiskey but you're not sure what type right kind of safe and, it's kind of safe yeah your options are basil or lagavulin <laughs> you know you're probably safer going with this one right because it yeah. just has that more of a universal approachability i guess to it well and as you're as we're sitting here, we're kind of like whispering back and forth, and like this is nosing really good oh, right now. I like, like this. this, like mm. I, I mean, granted, this is the new release, the ten-year-old version. Yeah. Um, however, um, so you like, there's a lot of depth to this nose now well, that I'm like kind of well, we semi not concentrating and concentrating on it. You know, well, hopefully, Ray, you hopefully you didn't watch all of the content that we put out there about <laughs> these bottles because most of it's quite awful, but. We did do a 30 second. We like, didn't, not awful in the sense that we gave it bad reviews. No, awful in just it's like just it's poor, that, poor yeah. quality and poor often, quality. <laughs> often, often intoxicated. No, um, I, I watched a few. No, I thought they were good. I had them all lined up in my thing ready to go. 
<laughs> no, just spare yourself. Just, just, just click the leap. Okay. <laughs> this will be enough. You'll, you'll have had enough at the end of this. Um, I think it was we did the Basil Hayden ten versus the original in a thirty second review, and it was like it only took thirty seconds to be like. This it's is- deeper and richer and bolder. I love it. You're like it's like that's the whole deeper, and richer, bolder. That's like the the keys to the bourbon lexicon right there. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Those are the. I like it. Those, those <laughs> yeah. Are those, right? like, you know, it's it's a really cool whiskey. You know, I think it's it's a, a great indication as well as to where we're moving with Basil Hayden. You know, this we're still hoping to have um, this around for quite a while, but you know, I think for Canada, we're probably going to be looking at like a. a at best, a yearly release uh, for the okay. 10-year-old bourbon. And 10-year-old rye, I'm, we're still not 100% sure what's happening there. Um, but, you know, you're, for the last probably five or six years, we've really dedicated a lot of time with Basil Hayden to rye and kind of leaning into that whole backstory of rye with Basil Hayden, right? Oh, Whereas that's... now we're kind of leaning back into the bourbon. We're also in the middle of a complete, you know, um, revitalization of the brand, I guess. You know, new packaging, um, it's going to have a bit more of like an up-to-date look. It's going to, you know, we've updated. Booker's will never get updated because that's just how Booker's is. Mm-hmm. Baker's has been updated. Knob Creek has been updated. So it's basil. Are you telling us we should buy our Basil Hayden belts now while we can? The belt won't go away. Oh, thank God. You, mu- you, might, you might see the bib disappear, but the belt won't go away. Okay. Will, I, the, I really... will the paper label be gone or will it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the bib. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, can, can I ask, from a marketing standpoint, this comes in a belt, right, for your jeans? <laughs> like, look at that. You know, that, uh, you that know, is fucking rad. I would wear that. I'd wear that. I do remember seeing a buckle one time. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, actually, I think my it was my predecessor, Matt Jones, who uh, who had it. Maybe I gotta hit Matty up and see if he still has that. But I pretty much merch. took half Matt's wardrobe when he left. <laughs> That's a merch bestseller right there. Um, the Basil Hayden belt buckle. You love the merch, oh, eh? Yeah. Oh, we love. Everybody loves merch. <laughs> Don't know what We've you're talking about. We've already had comments about your hat. People want that hat. You, you better be doing a giveaway on a hat tonight. Um, I, I, I can get some hats. <laughs> ok't okay, So I, I got hats. You don't know how many hats I have. I got all sorts of hats, man. <laughs> all it, it, one, one thing that is nice for our Dram Club members is that. They get a lot of really, really good stuff. Yeah, like, like whatever like, you send us, we're sending them. Yeah, like that's what's nice. Like I think uh, some people are weary because it's like, oh, we're giving all these guys stuff that they're just gonna drink. But in reality, we give like everything away. Yeah, after we're done drinking. After, um, you know, we get we get the ends of things. I'm just looking over on our shelf and I'm just thinking to myself, what's the deal with this? Is this a is this <laughs> oh, a is this still a thing? So much. Uh, yeah, it's still it's not available everywhere in Canada. Okay. Uh, it's still a, still a thing though. Actually, I think I got a. We, this, we is have, have, this is right beside no, me. It's like, not even on the shelf. It's on the floor beside my chair. Yeah, that's it. It's a thing. <laughs> well, it's forty-five percent. It, that like, it's like it's such a hidden gem. It's yeah. like insanely good. Yeah. Um, but it's it's just kind of one of those. You know, sometimes you release good whiskeys that just don't hit. Right. It happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. and for some reason, it just it just never really caught on as well as. To the Knob Creek ride, it for example, right? right. Um, which you know, it, in in ways that kind of does make sense. Maybe not from like a, oh, this tastes amazing type way, but like you know, thinking of like kind of the way marketplaces work, mm-hmm. it does make sense. But uh, yeah, a great whiskey, great find. Um, and but okay, in the last few years, Knob Creek has gone from having basically like one or two varieties to having like. 10 different types of Knob Creek. Like that Knob Creek's really blown blown up as a, as uh, a we're we're, we're pulling back on that as well. <laughs> oh, are you? Okay. What's yeah. going away? We we need to know what's going away so we can buy it. <laughs> um I mean, all of it really. Um <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's you know, don't want to be alarmist here. Um <laughs> but but it's all gone. It's all okay, gone. people, put it on it's over. Well, you know, a, a lot of them were just limited releases anyway, right? Like the Twice Barreled Rye, the uh, Quarter Oak, uh, they were both limit releases. The Cast Strength Rye is like a yearly release. Um, that's just, you know, when it's when it's available for us to make it. But we are doing a little bit of a switch up of 
the the brand as well, right? So, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've seen in the States with the introduction of a 12 and a 15, you know, particularly being part of like the core range, mm -hmm. not being one-time releases, but actually oh, like that, fair. that absorbs a, 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 an unimaginable amount of inventory to be able mm -hmm. to switch into all of a sudden having these as a part of a core range. Yeah. Yeah. And that's got to come from somewhere. Right. And is that is that core range going to come to North America then, or Canada? 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 Can, yes. Yeah, so, specifically, yeah, right <laughs> now, I mean, I'm I'm not sure about maybe the the Asian market, but I'm like 99 percent sure that it's only available right now within the U.S. Uh, we we are working on something uh, on getting one of them. Um, it's all just really going to come down to inventory, right? Like you know cool. how much they can they can actually send us because it right. needs to be it needs to be a a decent amount right like you know it would be great to have it up here but it would be more damaging to bring up four cases for the country you know that kind of way yeah yeah um um what's the deal with the um like we have a comment here maple smoked what's the deal with the maple smoked one yeah like, maple's still around yeah but like what's the deal with that what, like I, <laughs> it's, it's like, maple I'm you're, so, you're <laughs> hard hitting questions tonight <laughs> But so they get there's the, there's trees <laughs> and they kind of like put a tap into the tree and then this sappy stuff comes out tastes kind of like weird sugar. Um, <laughs> okay, that's the deal and thing, yeah, that's and the so thing. it's whiskey that tastes like that. Oh, what's the deal with this again? <laughs> <laughs> what's the deal? Yeah, the Seinfelds of the whiskey world uh, over here. Yeah, um, the deal? yeah no, the, the maple actually is. <laughs> Anyway, I'm, Basil Hayden's. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. This is this is like the night of tangents. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Great whiskey though. The, the show has really gotten better since I showed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just the two of us sitting here in silence before. Yeah, <laughs> which is better. <laughs> um, but no. Okay, I just finished the Basil <laughs> Hayden's. I crushed it. I don't know if we commented on Basil Hayden's at all, but it was richer and bolder. Well, and, no, uh, as dressing. we were sitting here, we were kind of saying, like, it's got a really, really nice nose to it. Yeah. I, it's, I, I think the, the, the age shows on it more than the other one. For sure, obvious, 100%. But it's just, like, it adds quite a lot to it, which the is The 10-year-old is a really good buy. It's yeah, a good buy. totally. Yeah. And... Save the bibs, people. And we do like the black and copper look. Yeah, like, it does almost, have a good look to it, yeah. And like, almost it's all of like Jim Beam. Is, like, it's kind of like this now, too, Jim, you know? Jim yeah. Beam's kind of gone black and black and copper, black and gold, right? Like Black, white, and red. Gold. That was the that was all these colors. Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's good. Okay. Um, shots? Okay. Okay. Shots. Uh, what, what do you suggest we uh, <laughs> what on next? But I think Makers is the only way to go from... Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Because we got our, a weeder here, correct? Yes. Yeah, yep. okay. Um, I mean, really, like, you know, when you're looking at what we've got in front of us here, right? These are all premium towards super premium releases, right? And, yeah. I mean, when you look at the world of bourbon, that's really the way the category is trending. It's trending definitely more towards premium, super premium, ultra premium offerings, this is why we have that, right? Like Maker's Mark was really that first premium bourbon to to ever really exist, and it kind of kicked open the doors for that to be a possible thing. Well, um, I I read a um or I saw a, like it was like the meme or something like that recently, and it was like actually it was a picture of um I, I won't get into too much detail because I won't describe it properly, but the point <laughs> the point of it was that. It was like you should basically you should thank the people that buy like you know um 30 bottles of jim beam white every year for your ability to purchase this premium stuff right because like and it, it, it was basically a picture of a guy holding up a truck and it was like this is the person buying like <laughs> oh, multiple yeah. cases of like the the bottom shelf stuff so that you can have access to like you yeah. know the really premium <laughs> And that's it. Well, like I mean, the the success or the ability to innovate and create new higher end products rests solely on the shoulders of Jimmy White. Yeah, that, so, and that's that's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing because Jim Beam White is nothing to bat your eyes at and or take a you know you take a second look at that one. Well, it's like you said, you um, take it for granted a little bit. Yeah, one hundred percent. Right. Like, 100%, right? Okay. Donner Pass Whiskey says that we forgot to put him on the list for the draw. Ugh. 
if that is the case, we will give you double the numbers for next time. Double ooh, the numbers. Ooh. I mean, that have been. Was that? Did we do that? Uh, That's I, mine. That I, would be... I blame Donner Pass Whiskey for not letting us know earlier. Sorry. I don't <laughs> well, know. well, you know, you know what I'll do. How, how about this, right? Because you know, on top of the bottle we have there, let me source down a cool hat for y'all. Oh, let me see if I can find that Booker's book. Mm, but I also going to send you guys out another book. Uh, it's Curse probably book. my favorite bourbon book. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's called cool. Fifty Shades of. Gr uh, I know it's um. <laughs> It's called American Still Life. It's written by a guy called F. Paul Packold, and it's basically the history of the Beam family. Is it anything like this? That's it. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's great. Yeah, it's like I my favorite. It. It's my favorite bourbon book. Yes. Um, cool. So I'll send you guys out a copy of that as well. This is my copy. So yeah, we'll, so we'll, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll take yours. <laughs> no, just use that one. Let's go. But though, uh, then we can, yeah, like the more that I think that's the cool thing, like with this channel the amount of things like i said we send out to people it keeps people engaged in the whiskey oh, world, especially during a global pandemic where we can't go to whiskey fest and we can't yeah. connect with well our read. whiskey buddies or whatever like everyone is a, just a handle to me now they're all <laughs> right yeah Piss lover 69 yeah or whatever. Take, i'm taking a note to send this out to you yeah uh, you. and by the way tim dietrich or not tim dietrich uh donner past whiskey we do apologize if we uh if we missed you on the draw numbers, we will catch you up on but that. But we have it on your phone, the draw numbers probably, right? Or is it something different? Uh, no, we probably do, but it just could get weird. It could get <laughs> okay. really weird. Um, gotcha. Yeah. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna double you down for the next one. We, we have asked numbers we must have sent out. No, no, no just, just, sorry. Okay, never just, mind. I never mind. just let it go. And Donner Pass, we'll hook you up. Um, We'll hook you up with the extra numbers on the next go round. We do have, we do have future sponsors and bottle giveaways coming up, so don't worry. Yeah. So let's get back to Maker's Mark here. Mm. Uh, we haven't talked about it really at all, but this is one of those ones, kind of like you said, it's it's premium whiskey, mm -hmm. but easily accessible and 100 in a lot of ways easily like. It kind of, it's not necessarily an exact step up from Basil Hayden, but it is. It's a lateral. Still, it's, it's, it's a lateral. you know, it's like a, it's a different style, but still very approachable. hundred percent. You know, it has that, you know, if you find that with, you know, Basil or Jim Beam, that they have that maybe a little bit more of a, like a bite to it or sharpness or even like a light bitterness to it. And that's something that you're not really a fan of. Then Makers is going to offer you everything except for that. Yeah. You know, it's, it, having that wheat and that absence of rye is going to give a lot more of those kind of freshly baked pastry notes to it. It's going to be much more forward finishing, a lot more of that sweetness. The vanilla on it turns into more of like a, like a French vanilla kind of flavor to it. It's very, very, very uh, luxurious. Oh, it just has that luxurious aroma. Creme brulee-ish. Creme brulee-ish, yeah. Um, um, but it's, well, you know, it's one of those distilleries that, I mean, is just one of the most wonderful places in the world. It's it's the Disneyland for whiskey lovers, right? Like it's just this incredible part of the world. Everybody, like every single person who works at the distillery is just like, they just keep getting better and better and better and better. Just yeah. such incredible people. Uh, that's really what it's, it's about. Right. Like, you know, and, and that distillery, are they, they're kind of like a family run still dipping the bottle in the wax kind of a place. Are they not? Yeah. hundred percent. So both of our distilleries, you know, uh, Rob Samuels, um, runs the kind of operations at Maker's Mark. It was his grandparents were Margie and Bill Senior that started Maker's Mark. Uh, you know, over at at um, at the Beam plant, you know, you've got Fred and Freddie. Like F Fred is seventh generation Beam, uh, seventh generation master distiller, and yeah. Freddie is eighth generation distiller within the family. There's always been one of those in charge. Uh, okay. But yeah, at, at Maker's, you know, every single bottle is still hand dipped, every single barrel is still hand rotated. You know, we the quality control and the grain is unbelievable. But we also like we only pull. I mean, all the corn and all the uh, the wheat that goes into production of this. I mean, it's coming from, you know, within eighty kilometers of the distillery. Okay. Right. So I mean, there's the Denny, our master distiller, is continuously doing trips out to yeah. the farms, right? And they they have that relationship, right? It's a three generation relationship now with the our grain sources, right? So, you know, everything has that real. Everything gets touched. That's kind of the big thing yeah. at Maker's Mark, right? Everything is touched with a hand. 
yeah, you know, that's, from that's like bottle dipping, the label and going on, the labels being cut by hand, right? Like yeah, all this stuff, it really does have that feel. That yeah, yeah, super cool. And okay, it's funny because when we're talking about the the flavor and nosing profile, again, we kind of talked about this earlier. Like, you could nose a whiskey for an hour and be totally satisfied with your like, yeah. experience. But this kind of reminds me of that because like the nose is really soft and subtle and it has these kind of nice woody sugary notes to it but and the flavor does the same but i really find for me personally that the the ending like the finish of this has like a real kind of almost like red wine cat tongue mm. kind of dry the dryness to it yeah but i love that like that's yeah. one thing that's like it's one of my favorite tasting it, it, well, it's, it's like that sip that makes you want to you want that second sip and that third one and that mm -hmm. fourth one yeah yeah you need that it's like, super that inviting yeah yeah um, one of my, one of my proudest moments like in life came with Maker's Mark and it was last summer and we were at, uh, at Trenny's trailer. And I so thought you were going to say your kids or something, but anyway. no, 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 who cares about the stupid kids? Um, uh, but we were at Trenny's trailer and some of our friends were there and they were like, Oh, like you, you guys think, you know, your whiskey, like, uh, uh, I'm going to give you one and you got to guess what it is. And it was like out of nowhere, out of completely left field. And it had been in the freezer and they poured it into like a plastic cup and I did the sniff and I spent about five minutes with it. And I was like, maker's mark. And they were like, what? Like, it's it, pretty impressive. It was, it, cause it was, it was, cause it they, could be any bourbon. It could have been anything. <laughs> yeah. Right? The bourbon's like, a tough one. And, and they put, it was like in the freezer and then they put ice cubes in it. And I was like scooping it. I'm like, no, like I got to. <laughs> How do you smell it? And yeah, it, was like, yeah. <laughs> it just, it was like, I had a moment, were, I blacked you're, out. You're, I was just the, like, oh, make your smart. You know, and it was like. You were like Neo. You're the chosen oh, one it was, for that moment. It was my <laughs> proudest moment in life. Yeah. And then at my kids after that. Yeah. yeah that's, uh, and then third. It's really and sad, man. Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then maybe the wedding day. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, um, I like your work. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it really is. It's just it's that iconic bourbon, right? It's that yeah. really it as I said, so like we have makers to thank for the world of premium bourbon, right? Totally. And for really um and the makers forty six is really great. And then every year the um the special I don't know what they're called. We we had the one the, with the staves in it. We had the one the with private the select. Yeah. Yeah. Those go so fast too. Boom, boom, boom. Like in the release. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we don't, we don't make a lot, right? Like each, each one of those, that, that's a barrel by barrel situation. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, here in Canada for a long time, it just wasn't available for us because we weren't getting barrels. We finally did manage to convince them to let us get some up here. Uh, yeah. But I mean, nationally, you're looking at, we maybe get seven or eight barrels to wow. release. Right. So, I mean, you know, we two of them will go to uh, BC liquor stores, two will go to the LCBO. Mm -hmm. um, you might have Manitoba Liquor Mart has, has done an incredible job with them, actually. I think they've had five barrels so far over the last three oh, wow. years. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, well, so it goes, I mean, it, it's like that, right? Like, but so one thing about that, though, is the fact that it's been easily accessible in British Columbia for many years. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the price has always been right really yeah. like for the quality that's in the in the bottle like you're not getting ripped off ever no and you got that you extra know? percentage like i think it's like after tax 50 bucks kind of thing so that's great it's good like it's good yeah, yeah. um yeah it's, it's definitely with with makers in particular i mean all of our products but makers in particular you know the price of it is something that we really kind of we really keep an eye on because because yeah. because we don't want it to ever sway like away from the vision that Rob and Margie had, or uh, Bill and Margie had for it, and what they well, wanted it to be, and who they wanted to be able to drink it, and mm -hmm. we don't want to price out of their original vision because you know, that's, that's why they created it. Yeah, well, and uh, it's one again that you come back to, even if you've tried it a hundred times, you're like, oh yeah, isn't this, this the is one? So good. Maybe I missed it earlier because I uh, had to smack my kid around a little bit, but um, jeez. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. I give him a cookie. And this is amazing it. PR. Yeah. Go for um, <laughs> Jim Beam loves that. Just kidding. Um, uh, isn't this the one where the guy baked the bread and then <laughs> the bread rest? Or it, sorry, this is a key, hitting a note for you. Sorry, go. No, ahead. no, no. Yeah. That's like is the, it uh, true or is yeah. this some bullshit? That's like Cole's notes. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did, did we cover this already? No. Okay, ac- good. According to the Samuels family, <laughs> I hope I put it like that. Okay. Yeah, right. like it's, you know, every family has a lore, right? And yeah. according you know, to Basil Hayden. This yeah, like the, I, the the story is true. The process is true. Uh, well, how long it lasted it. for, I don't know. Well, yeah, because, I mean, you know, Bill was kind of thinking, all right, if I, I want to, it all really started because they made T.W. Samuel Saramash. And yeah. when Bill became in charge, he actually hated the whiskey they were making. Hated it. Because oh, cool. he, fa- he found it was bitter. He found it was too dry. It was just, it just wasn't good for him. So he sold the brand. Got rid of it. Burned the recipe. We can't make it anymore. But, you know, trial and erroring whiskey is a really expensive thing to do. Mm-hmm. And he knew that like, there was a good chance if he started, you know, playing around that way, it could be 20 years and a couple million dollars later and they still wouldn't have anything. Yeah. So he was like, okay, well, you know, Bread really generally profiles like it's master grain, right? Like cornbread profiles like corn distillate. So why not just play around with different grains and making bread and see yeah. if I can land on something? And that was really kind of how he how he found the the mash bill. And then he kind of went, okay, well, let's now I like this. Let's go and see how this works. Yeah. And it, yeah, I mean, it makes sense. It's like a really, really logical way to uh, crazy, kind of right? Come up with a, a rest like small scale version of a recipe. Too bad he didn't make cast strength bread. <laughs> he does. We do. <laughs> yeah, we go. just don't have it here. <laughs> exactly. Um, no, it's super good. Like Maker's Mark, just a classic, right? For years. Yeah, it, it really is. It's it's the quintessential bourbon, right? So, do we have any? Uh, I haven't. I can't see the screen, but do we have any comments that we should be addressing? With uh, uh, we're just mostly trying to ignore Swami because he's here <laughs> and it's hard to so deal with hard, that guy. Hard to shake. He's hard to shake, yeah. Um, yeah, just lots of comments about the the special releases and the Makers Forty Six. And what's the significance of the Makers Forty Six? Uh, so Makers Forty Six was really it was the first innovation, right? Like you know, Makers got released in nineteen fifty eight, and they made one whiskey until twenty ten. Yeah, right. One whiskey, one whiskey only. So the whole idea behind it was that they they didn't ever want to move away from again that vision that margie and bill had right and it was all very much based around the mash bill based around the maturation process so if you start messing with any of that then you're changing the whole idea and you know Mm -hmm. they're quite a traditional family um so with this it was basically okay well we can make you know makers 46 starts out as makers cast strength Mm, okay right then we'll take 10 lightly seared pieces of french oak they'll go in there for nine weeks out to our limestone cellar They'll sit in there for yeah, nine weeks. They'll start to, I always describe them as volume controls, right? Mm-hmm. They're just taking flavors that already exist in the whiskey and just kind of turn them up a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, particularly the vanilla, the dried fruit notes, slight baking spice qualities. And yeah. that was then where we got the idea for the private select program, mm-hmm. right? So we cool. could do a barrel selection because that's really what private select is. It's a barrel pick, yeah. right? But now what yeah. we can do is we can actually tailor it. So you can make one specifically for the flavor profiles of where you live, right? And I mean, I can tell you, man, I lucky enough to travel across this country like daily when things are normal. And there's a big difference between what people like in St. John's, Newfoundland, and what people like in Victoria, mm. right? Where where their flavors go. So mm. now we have the option of being able to tailor a barrel pick to specific oh. areas for specific flavor profiles. And I think that's really, I mean, it, it's where the success in a program has come from. It. I think it's really, really cool. I'm not allowed well, to swear when I do these things, but if I could, it would be an effing cool whiskey. How about that? I can say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That is cool. That is cool. I, I, actually, as C was taking care of uh, his kid there, he was, we were talking about how Maker's Mark as like a distillery is like the Disneyland of distilleries, oh. right? Yeah, so, man, it's like that's it's we most we wonderful place on earth. The day that we can actually go down, uh, down south and check out some of these places because it's uh, it's it's nice talking to someone like you who has the experience of these places and the people and the mm-hmm. you know it really actually sets a vibe of what each kind of company or whiskey or brand is about. Well, it because, sounds like yeah. from talking to Ray, like how like family oriented is even yeah. though it's so massive like yeah, how so cool. like you don't hear about a corporation that's like that massive that's like yeah yeah family kind of like based what are know? you talking about wally <laughs> wally mark <laughs> wally mark yeah. I, I, you know i think the thing what it is like sure beam centauri is like the the overall company but when it comes to the actual production facilities and stuff like that you know 
these things have been around for longer than Beam Satori, and they kind of let them run yeah. like yeah. that, right? You know, they they don't, which is really great, you know, having a company like, especially like Centauri come in, where they believe very much in culture, and they believe very much in, you know, we're buying you because you're doing it right, and we're not coming in to change yeah. it. So, you know, it's, I mean, if anything, they've been encouraging about, yeah, like, you know. For sure. I mean, Beam Centauri is, like, the dream lineup, as far as I'm concerned, of everything that they promote. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So, it's yeah. yeah. It, really, it really is. You know, Especially for whiskey. Ray, we're talking about our love for Highland Park, and that's a whole other story, but. It's just, it's just you just said it on camera. I know, but now he's gonna it. get fired now. Oh no, that's one of us. Kind that's, of. That's <laughs> yeah. yeah. So so yeah, like it's just got a huge such a huge umbrella of amazing well, I, did does. See, I did see a bottle. I thought I saw a bottle of Blanton's on your shelf and in, in a picture that uh that was on the internet. Oh yeah, there's there's one there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to have that on camera. Listen, you gotta see what the competition's doing, right? There you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. I love that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, yeah, like so it's yeah. Sorry, yes, we're. I'm. Sorry, should man. we move on? I, I mean, I have. I've done my. You've moved so. on. You've moved on. <laughs> uh, we all know and love Maker's Mark. I hope our dram clubbers are enjoying it too, and maybe for the people who haven't revisited it in a while, um, this is do kind it. of a perfect opportunity. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Um, so, what do you think, Knob Creek? Knob next? Creek. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Cool. I gotta say, like, I really I, since the new nine is back, like, uh, we compared it. We did a video actually before um, that's me. Uh, before before you um, uh, sponsored us this month, just before that, we compared the new knob nine to the old one, and um, we really loved the new one. Like, yeah, the new one is fantastic. Yeah, the, the differences I mean, are the old one too. But, yeah, the differences are they're slight, and we we wanted to make sure that we kept because when we switched from nine years to the no age statement originally, the whole idea was to try and keep the flavor as close to as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. And now switching back to the nine year, that was still the idea. I think if anything, this has a little bit more of the wood interaction, which is kind of to be expected. <laughs> uh, a little bit more wood spice, I think the vanilla is a bit more pronounced in it. The smoke, like that, not that heavy smoke, but kind of like. Somewhere mm -hmm. someone just blew a fire out. You know, we're yeah. not sure how far away it is, but you get that kind of real light whisper. Yeah, it's like in the fall air. The spring yeah, air. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Where it's it's there, but you don't know where. Yeah, that was a good. Point. Um, nice. There's a bit more of that of that going around, but so but this is now fully back, right? So like that's great. The, the um, old I mean, it's, it's been bottling you won't see around here forever too. Like it's just you can't go wrong. It's same kind of price point as the maker's mark yeah, it's a 50 and you, you can't go yeah. wrong with that like it's 50 yeah. percent now you're getting the delicious. niche oh, you know yeah. it's got the it's got Each the statement, statement which people love you know people love to see that and then 50 percent people love that you know mm -hmm. it's like uh it's probably our, mo our most versatile whiskey yeah right like you know yeah. it, it can kind of suit in any situation yeah, especially it's a really excellent cocktail. You know, well, I'm, I'm swearing a little bit now, but cocktailing whiskey, hundred like percent in an old fashioned and in a whiskey sour. Well, because it's that that slight extra age where you get a bit more of the wood influence, that mm -hmm. higher ABV where you get a bit more of the wood influence. It just helps it stand up a bit, especially if you're adding heavily flavored modifiers to it, right? Citrus, sugar, all those sort of things are going to fight against the natural flavor of whiskey. So when you have that little bit more depth to your product, it's going to help it carry through, but not to the point where, you know, like making a Booker's uh, whiskey sour, for example, right? Just use that as an example. Yeah. It can be quite difficult because it's really hard to balance out. You can't just go by the standard two, two, half, right? Um, with Knob Creek, it, it gives you that little bit more depth to your, your cocktail, but without overpowering anything. It's just, and that's really where a lot of the success of it came back in the nineties. Bartenders just attached themselves to it. Yeah. So right. It, because it's such an easy, it's, well, I shouldn't say easy. It's like, it's actually a really relatively complex bourbon, but it, it's as good of a, like a noser and a sipper as anything else that oh, you can find. Sure. But mm -hmm. for, if you want, you know, Basically, good cocktails come with good quality whiskey too. So that's kind of, you know, where this can come in. One, I, one, 
One thing off topic here, Ray, um, taking this in a different direction, is that we just got a question about Legion. Oh. And yeah. the thing that the thing that I'm thinking about here is that I love Legion questions. <laughs> you being you being the brand ambassador for Beam Centauri is like you must get paid more because you have to deal with like we've talked about Jim Beam Rye tonight. We've talked about the five bottles we have here. We've got Legion. We've barely even talked about bookers. Like, like there's, you guys have a lot going on. And uh, yeah. you like, I think, a, you I think my portfolio, my portfolio is 12, 13 brands. Yeah. And then inside of that, we've got at least probably five or six SKUs per brand at least. Right. Well, like variations. So actually, for- speaking of that, why don't we tell people what some of those brands are? Because like, I don't think there are people that don't really understand how associated and how you know kind of close all these companies are to each other yeah so when you've got jim beam obviously uh makers mark there are two you know big very big Mm -hmm. brands uh then basil hayden knob creek bakers bookers little book legion old granddad old overholt old crow um i think i missed one there old tub uh what's that 12 yeah maybe that's it 12 (laughs) but then but then as beam centauri on the like the scotch realm of things there's others in scotch yeah there's uh scotches akintoshan bowmore lefroy glengarry then we have a partnership part ownership in in edrington which is mccallan glenrothes famous grouse yeah uh, highland park centauri then have the Toki, Hibiki, Chida, yep. Akushu, Yamazaki here in Canada, Alberta Distillers, and um, so Alberta Premium, Alberta Springs, and Canadian Club. Yeah, we also have Re down in the states, although we don't get it up here. What's it called? Re, Rye, Re, Rye. Re, Rye. I've never tasted it. We've I've never seen it up here. Um, that's that's see that just in itself, it's like having to be able to keep up with one brand mm-hmm. in general is like, there's so many releases and updates and things yeah. happening all the time. <laughs> it's like you, you, you start to understand why the, these brand ambassadors uh, have full-time <laughs> gigs, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, a, a lot of it. Really. Yeah. Sorry. So there was, there was a Legion question. Sorry. Well, the <laughs> question yeah. and it's come up a couple times now is like, how did Legion do um, for sales kind of versus expectations or like, and then are we going to see a uh, continued like kind of um, hybrid styles like that? Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, that's it's kind of a tough question because I think the expectations were very much, you know, depending on who you asked. Um, I don't think it was so much of a let's release this product, put two big names behind it and sell, you know, millions of cases a year that was it was it was a statement i think more than anything else Mm -hmm. it was it was really closing the chapter on the acquisition right and i mean for centauri like you know it's within their culture it's very very they weren't just coming in and purchasing a a brand a company and okay like you're you're ours now it was a marriage for them right and to them it wasn't going to be complete really until there was that collaboration between beam and centauri so that's really what it was. It was it was marking that first moment of you know now we have fully kind of assimilated. We're now Beam Centaurium. We're going to do that by bringing together the the East and West worlds of whiskey making. You know, two very 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 different philosophies around producing alcohol and around producing whiskey, right? And kind of letting them play together. So I mean, from from that aspect, I think the I think the whiskey did exactly what it was supposed to do. Uh, I personally think it is incredible. I love the whiskey. Um, Did it match up with my own personal expectations as far as sales go? No. But I think a lot of that was probably on us. You know? Um, You can't just release a whiskey and expect it not to do anything. Or expect it just to fly off the shelves, right? It's not really how it works. Um, But, yeah, I mean, I I think it's wonderful. We we actually will be re- packaging legion as well um mm. same bottle you'll just see a little bit of a different label on it that should be coming towards the end of the year i'd say maybe early next year and and adding on to that it's kind of like in reality it's nice to start seeing companies 
it's like a experimentation too, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what? It's, you it's... See so many like Scotch distillers using sherry barrels and port barrels or whatever it might be. This is kind of like a different version of that in a way. Yeah, I mean, I I think my favorite thing about Legion was how many people it annoyed. Right, because because yeah. like it's bourbon is so traditional, and yeah. and things haven't changed for so long that it was kind of about time that we started to push the envelope again and start to say, okay, yeah. well, bourbon well, doesn't just have to be this, 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 right? We can do other things. We can have different outside the box approaches to it and, you know, create new great whiskeys and push it forward a little bit. Right. No, at least, at least. The, the, um, one of the comments was how about a bigger cork? Maybe and it's we're like, working on it. Yeah. We're going <laughs> to, we're going to do like, like that size. It's actually like massive. It's amazing. Uh, that was a good comment. I like it. <laughs> oh, it's a great thing. It's a great thing. Oh, we love a good chunky cord. <laughs> yeah, it gives you a good pop as well sometimes. Yeah, good pop. So I'm just going to interrupt you here one second just oh. because. So you're going to close them off right I now. am. Why am I on? <laughs> we, my phone that I'm on right now is. I'm entering uh, the studio. Like I'm entering the studio. Percent. So I'm going to like. Yeah, yeah he's, 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 he's doing, doing it right now. Switch it out. Get rid of it. Oh, oh my god. Technically, this is the smoothest a, a show has ever gone for us. So <laughs> there I mean, that's it. okay. <laughs> it's like changing over the battery in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's what? Like, sorry, our Nintendo, we have to blow on it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> there we go. We're we're back. We're back. How about more of me and less of you? There we go. That's good. Private mode? Am I in private mode? What does that mean? What's what's going on? Can anyone see my desktop? Can anyone see any of the windows I have open? You're into some real weird Uh, stuff. Sorry about that. That's kind of what happens around here. Yeah. We apologize. Yeah. (laughs) We'll continue to apologize profusely throughout this show. Here we go. We're getting there. Was that? Okay, oh, that's ready. Good. That's good. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, it's perfect. No, it's no. perfect. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. No, we got to go back. Yeah, that no. bit. yeah, there we go. Okay, we're back. There we go. We're back. Okay, so we were moving on from um, Knob Creek, which we well, might have talked so about. We I'm might have talked about Knob Creek. But there's a healthy pour here. I don't know about you, but are you still. Uh, I have a healthy pour. For you have a healthy yeah. pour there? Yeah, it's like a little, little bit after. Well, I think, okay. you know, I think that the main thing, you know, kind of to, to I guess, get it across to, to your, your viewers is, is that, like, this is now, this is now it, right? Like, you know, this is your the yeah. old uh, packaging and some of that. It's gone. It will be a nine year age statement moving forward. Uh, will there be, is there a possibility for there to be, you know, supply issues because of that along the line? 100% there is. Uh, we're doing everything we possibly can to make sure that we won't hit that point. But I think it's more yeah. important for us now to make sure that we're returning it to what Booker had wanted Knob Creek to be than anything else. Right? So uh, will you continue to put out the like um, annual, I don't know if it's annual everywhere, but like the single barrel options as well? Like, the you know, BC Liquor picks them up every year for the spirit release. So right now they're on hold. Oh. Um, because... As I said, you know, having something like, like we're, we genuinely do listen to what people ask for. The only thing is people ask for everything. It's impossible to make everybody happy all the time, right? Um, you want a 20-year-old all day, every day. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, one thing that, that we people were really asking for for a long, long time was for some of the more higher age state Knob Creeks to be more readily available. Okay. Right? And that was something that we definitely felt was you know, a, a path that we wanted to go down. Um, so, you know, in order to do that, something's got to go, right? Like, you know, we just physically can't produce enough to, especially not now, right? Because we're going to be ready in 10 years, 12 years, yeah. 15 years, right? <laughs> yeah, um, it's pretty long down the road. Yeah, so I know they're certainly on, on hold up here in Canada. I mean, we didn't do a whole lot of them anyway, to be completely honest, in Canada. Uh, but we have replaced that program with Baker's. Mm-hmm. So now people are able to go and actually do uh, Baker's single barrel picks mm-hmm. and have cool. them. I think I've seen some of them go up as far as like 12, 14 years of age. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, That's it's it's replacing one for the other. It will take a while for us to get Baker's up to the same kind of uh, 
I guess, to be able to create the same quantity as we were doing with Knob Creek. But that's yeah. certainly the plan is to, to shift it that way. Can I and ask you a question? Oh, oh no. no, it's, no, no, that's, no. That's, really, that's really good because, I mean, there's, it's, I feel like it, there's a good split between the Baker's fans and the Knob Creek fans that want that, like, kind of special boggling for to themselves almost, you know? So, sorry, what were you going to say? I was going to ask about that fire at the, um, at one of the, the, um, Warehouse warehouses uh was it last year or two years ago? Oh the crow or... fire, yeah. That was uh that was two years. I was actually out there. I was in uh, Victoria that day. Oh and, I mean and somebody called me from Toronto, like not knowing I was in Vancouver, and they called me real early and I got real annoyed. <laughs> um but yeah, that was that was rough. I mean, I think there was the equivalent of just over 10 million bottles worth of whiskey that was gone. Uh, about, yeah, about 48,000 or so um, barrels. Um, Some out for the homies. Yeah, yeah you know, look, the, here, here's the thing. Nobody was hurt, which is yeah. main thing. The majority of the whiskey that was in there was new. So, oh, you know. <laughs> That's it, what I was getting at. Was like, yeah. was there anything... Incorrect. Was there like Booker's Rye in there that we didn't know about? That- no, it, it was all pretty new product. Um, so you know, like by now we've pretty much, I would, I would imagine we've replaced the majority of it anyway. Like kick up production yeah. for a couple months, you're good to go. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I think the, the one thing though that really did suck was the the environmental impact, I guess, of it. You know, I mean that water or that liquid's got to go somewhere. Right. And when you start yeah. flooding, you know, ten million bottles of whiskey into rivers and lakes and stuff, it it, it has an impact. So that was yeah. the that was the the one thing that we're you know most concerned about, and we have been even you know now we're still working really really close with the local conservation um, authorities to make sure that we can you know help get things back to where they were. Um, but yeah. I mean, thankfully, you know, no, nobody was. It, look, at the end of the day, it, it's just whiskey, right? Yeah. yeah. So you know, if it, it can be Beautiful. it can be replaced. Beautiful. Lives can't, right? Oh, yeah. totally. Yeah. No, and that that's the thing is like, uh, can you, can, you know, like you put up the dams, at, like when there's an oil spill, you know, like <laughs> yeah. you can put up the dams and 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 keep contain it. Like, I can't imagine you can really do that you with a river. Need, of, it's it's of like a burning it's like a recycling program where it's just huge bounty sheets. It's just me and you at so the end of the out, river, just like, and then you can uh, rebottle it. You know, yeah. there's some really cool ones uh, up at Maker's Mark. So. We have, like, when you're in the main campus, there's, like, a hill that goes up to the side. And that hill is actually, the inside of that is the cellar for Maker's Private Select and Maker's oh, 46. Yeah. But up on top of there, there's, like, you know, a whole bunch of warehouses. But there's also the lake where we pull all the water from, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, Maker's is incredibly uh, environmentally active. Like, yeah. very, very, very much so. Uh, to the point where we actually have a team on site who that's their job is mm-hmm. to cool. And the guy who leads the team, Jason, his, like his dad's house is like the equivalent of a half a block off the, the campus. Um, but they had, they do have some really really cool contraptions up there for if there's the possibility of a fire happening, uh-huh. that you know it kind of drains down into these weird like trenches and it gets oh, doused wow. with all this uh, like I think it's like a carbon dioxide or something i don't know i, I don't know science stuff but something that like, removes the oxygen and kind of tempers oh, the wow. flames and it diverts itself off towards these oh, tankers it's great. really really cool it was very very interesting going up and seeing it oh that's great like as we're talking just because the term booker's rye came up and the oh, question God. is is booker's rye coming back um no no <laughs> okay it shall I mean, remain thousands of dollars on the secondary you can yeah it up like there. You know, Booker's Rye was, it was really an experiment that Booker laid down just to see what would happen, right? Um, it's it's not something that we can just replicate uh, because it wasn't the, rye, wasn't the rye recipe that we use for all the rest of our products. So it wasn't like we have some sitting out there that's going to be Knob Creek. We just leave it sit for an extra seven years or whatever. Right. Um, and that's what did. makes it so amazing that you're giving a bottle away tonight. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> just no. just quickly like coloring a bottle of Booker's in with green. Paint. Yeah. <laughs> it's like um, got the, the green pan out. Like, yeah. yeah. But there there was some we did lay down some barrels uh of the same mash bill, which are actually in the 
the latest little book. Ah. Mm. So the ride it's in that is the same mash bill that we use for Booker's ride. So there's some laid down. It's not as old, I don't think. Well, you know, like honestly, the um the little book that we bought, um it's right here. I think it was chapter two with all the it was all the rock, Canadian right? stuff, yeah. That one was actually really great yeah, too. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> was, North versus south. Yeah, that was so yeah, good. Was, you know, I, I think that the little book series to me is probably one of the coolest things that we're doing right now. Because mm. at some point Freddie will be our master distiller. Yeah. And this is really just like it's it's essentially a journal, right? Like we're getting to see his progression as a distiller go on and go on and go on and as also as a blender. And like as he learns new things, you see that in the next year's release. It's really cool to be able to kind of have that as a keepsake, right? So is uh Canadian Club is associated with you guys somehow, correct? Yeah, it's under the Beam Centauri umbrella. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So like you've got some pretty amazing uh highly aged Canadian whiskey in there as well, right? Yeah, like it's 40 year old. Yeah, like yeah. It's up uh, to 43. Yeah, now. I mean, if people can get their hands on that one, just do it because like and I gotta say, and drink it. Don't just scroll yeah. away. These are meant to be drinking. Hundred percent. Drinking? Drinking? Um you know, people pe families don't spend their lives trying to create great recipes for it to go and sit on the shelf. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Um, okay, okay. We're, we're on to our last we're on to our last uh, shot beverage here, and then we will do the uh, old tub bottle it bottle giveaway. Bottle it, yeah. Bottle it. As bottle. you can see, it's this it's a, actually a special Trenny and C edition bottle here. So yeah. this that is specifically labeled in uh Victoria or somewhere in, in my yeah. garage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. For your Pleasure. No, this is the one that's on. Uh, this is straight from Beam Suntory. That's the old yeah. tub <laughs> trending C single barrel. It's uh, new in uh, Ray's portfolio. Yeah, um, it's extra what? cheesy. It's weird with old tub. It's our newest, yeah. but also our oldest whiskey. Really? Yeah. But so like, we'll, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's, okay. Well, sorry. Let's I'm gonna, go I'm to Baker's. Here. Let's go to Baker's. Baker's. Okay. We could talk, um, like we could. This could probably be six hours long easily. Uh, we yeah, could, we because each one of these whiskeys deserves. Yeah, we're all, don't worry, people. We're almost done. <laughs> you know, we should do that for like charity, like the twenty-four hour whiskey tasting. Oh, the whiskey a thon. Yeah, we could do it. Drink we we we'd be into the um we'd be into the what? barbecue sauce by the end, but <laughs> we'd we'd have to take nap breaks because. Oh, it would oh, it would yeah, be a, sure. it would be a sight by hour like fifteen. Yeah, we'd be 16. rotating, and, and then uh, like half yeah. an hour just us on film eating chicken wings, <laughs> <laughs> sauce everywhere. It's the with, only way to with, do it with the Jim Beam barbecue sauce on them, right? Yeah, there you go. That stuff also, is good. We've got like show show the Hello, people. One sec. There you go. Show the people. We is it like a little of, flask bottle kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's freaking like good. Or raccoons, we kind of just ripped into the package, but. Uh, there we go. Okay. Sorry, I just got so many. I only have so many hands here. Look at this. We got the bowl that we got the extra tangy. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Got the extra the nice flipper here too. I haven't had that. What's cool. that? Southern Southern what? I haven't had that. Yes, yeah, the Southern Tang barbecue sauce. Yeah. And then I don't know why I lean closer to look. It's not doesn't make a difference. Okay. All right. It's huh. single barrel. Single barrel. So you know it's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That keep going. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Ooh. we got that. Got the barbecue sauce going. and the flipper. I think you guys saw, but the uh, Jim Beam flipper. Know. Anyway, so Baker's. <laughs> I got that as a Christmas present about three years ago, and yeah. I forgot to open it, and now it's like I, I got it. Now it's just some time for barbecue it. season, man. Well, it's exactly. a collector's edition now. You can't eat that barbecue sauce. Um, and oh, I'm eating it. Honestly, <laughs> one one of the my. Actually, not Man. one of Sorry. my favorite glass in my cupboard right now um, is a free glass I got on a Jim Beam <laughs> bottle. Yeah. It's a couple of years old now, but it is my by far my favorite just Coke Zero and Jim glass. Like it's unbelievable. I gotta bring this glass out. I'm sorry, so, it's the star of the show. And I, I just this. gotta say, uh, you know, one of the things we promote on Trending and Sea, and it's really dumb, but. We are big Jim Beam and Coke Zero fans. Like it's it's kind of a go to cocktail when you've had one too many and it's you're great. Just moving on, you know. I there's, mean, I guess there's nothing wrong with a bourbon and cola. 
Nothing. Oh, it's 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 so good. So okay, let me tell you something. This is oh, this I is the 2021 it. free Jim Beam glass. <laughs> kind of square. Not not the biggest fan. It's a little small to get your like you can barely get a couple ice cubes in there. This sucker here though. Yeah, those are great. Look, yeah. This is a good <laughs> look at that. Look at the surface area in there. The, the square the footage. Zero and Jim Beam is just perfect. And then you got the knob creek kind of highball glass. Those ones are like, good, yeah. That's a good heavy on the bottom like like an old-fashioned glass yeah that's a good one it's just i gotta say ray if you have any input into this the latest one it can use a little work but those ones i definitely didn't (laughs) but this one here wow this is really something people anyway okay sorry no, this is the merch. We, we digress. We digress. Hour five of the six hour. Uh, <laughs> we're into Jim Beam glassware tonight, people. Okay. Okay. What do we Knob doing? Creek. Um, no. Taking Baker. Sorry, Baker's Baker, single Baker. Baker. Um, Eight years, a, six months. Taking a first uh, nosing tug. at this, like nose tug. Oh God. I. I mean, sizzles. I realize nose. now why in a blind tasting it was. It pulled me in that direction, but this is a different version. Like I know it is. I think this is. I think this is personally. I think this is way better because I didn't rank the Baker Seven, the old one, as high. That being said, it was like the Canada batch, right? Like that was that was just this batch that we got. But I'm loving the new one. Like absolutely loving. I I get this like really like. Okay, I used to make this thing for dessert, and it was like a. I don't know if you call it sautéed, but like sautéed bananas and brown sugar and butter. Like bananas with, foster kind of thing? Uh, yeah, exactly. And this has that nose to it. Like, you don't find a lot of banana in uh, like the line this, no. in its lineup, but it's that yeah, brown it's, sugar uh, and butter kind of banana mm, deliciousness that I love. There's a there's definitely a chocolate note. You know, Baker's was actually the bourbon that got me into bourbon. Really? Mm. Yeah, I... So I lived down in New York and this year is probably what six almost 16 years ago. Yeah. And I I didn't like I mean I grew up in you know middle of nowhere in Ireland, literally a stone's throw from the Kilbegan distillery. So I was grew up loving Irish whiskey, light whiskey, right? Like yeah. you know, soft, delicate, like slightly fruity. So bourbon for me was just it was too big, it was too bold. And when I was working in New York, me and my, my roommate, we worked at the same bar. We used to go across the street to Tiernan Oak. And we do this little thing where, like, I was a big Irish whiskey guy. He was a big bourbon guy. So we'd each, like, after every shift we got off together, we'd go across. I'd buy him an Irish whiskey, and he'd buy me a bourbon. And it was kind of like trying to convince each other that, you know, yeah. Irish better, no bourbon's better, that kind of thing. And we got into this, this uh, you know, situation where we were kind of nerding out on it. We'd have, like, presentations prepared for each other, right? <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> yeah. all this sort of stuff. And I guess at one Rose point, the part... Yeah, the bartender came over one day and he asked if I had had bakers before. And I thought he said makers. And I was like, Yeah, you know, I, I, I had wasn't really for me. And I think the whole big thing was I just didn't really understand bourbon. I didn't get I didn't get it. And uh he pulls down the baker's bottle. I was like, Oh, I've definitely never had that. So he poured one and it was that moment, right? Like everybody has one of them yeah. in their life mm-hmm. where I kind of tasted it and everything just went clear. I was yeah. like, Oh crap, I get it now. Okay. <laughs> and then we started like, oh, going back and wins, going through everything. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, hang on, like, you know, trying back through everything I tasted beforehand, but now I was like, wow, this tastes really, really good. And I started to be able to actually, you know, assess flavors better, get deeper into the whiskeys, you know, and it just, yeah, it just really kind of spiraled from there. But you know, Baker's was it was the, the one that started it off. So it's it's kind of cool to see it get a facelift. It's kind of cool to see it get a program of its own and to see kind of the attention be put into it that it deserves as a brand. Mm -hmm. And we used to do something similar. Like he was a scotch guy and I was a bourbon guy and we kind of did the same thing. It was like trying to convince each other that, you know, maybe initially that the other was better or something or that you, you know, but really, and they were like, well, we're both winners. Yay. We're both winning and drunk. Yeah. 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 There's, there's no, there's no better or worse. It's just, no, they're just different experiences. And like, I think it's it all, all it is is just like anything you do whether it's play music or paint or carpentry or whatever you gain experience in something and then you can really appreciate what, it, 100%. You know, what it's all about like yeah um, i mean for me bourbon one of my first 
actually my first uh, real kick to the teeth was uh, Booker's. And it, it, you know, it was one of those whiskeys that makes you all of a sudden realize you're alive. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah. So, we, we call so it so pajama bourbon. Dive into bourbon. It's, uh, you know, with the Baker's, the one thing I love about it, I think one of my favorite things about going to any distillery is smelling the rack houses. You know, I think it's just kind of it's just having that air full of whiskey really. It's just something about mm-hmm. that smell. But I think from our portfolio, Baker's is the whiskey that is closest resembles the air in the rack house. Oh, okay. Slightly cool. kind of musty, but it also has that like just real just traditional bourbon smell to it. But it's it's all around. It's not thin. It's just yeah. It's kind of like dry from sweet here. and like uh, yeah. So many- it's, it's really it's wonderful, like, a wonderful super, like, I think they're in the past, maybe not so much now, but only five or six years ago, like scotch was the king mm-hmm. and people have slowly kind of caught on to the fact that when a bourbon is made right, like this one it's sitting here, it's equally as powerful or, oh, yeah. you know, Oh yeah. Look at this awe inspiring or whatever you want to call it. Like right. it's, it's you, the same amount of care and thought and process has been put into it. I think as well, you know, I mean, like Canada, Canada is a growing market, right? It's, I mean, it's yeah. for a lot of spirits, right? It's still what you consider to be quite a young market, right? So as the market grows, as more things become available, I mean, look, no matter where you are in, in the country, you know, you can't tell me that the selection now is not as is not better than it was 15 years oh, ago, right? 100%, 100%. So as that happens, you get more educated, you know, yeah. you start to see more what's out there. And I think it eventually melds into a thing where there is none, no more of this. I only drink scotch. I only drink Irish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have, you have a country full of whiskey drinkers, right? And it's, you know, kind yeah. of the wh- whiskey is the main thing that we're looking for here. Right. And, you know, and then, then you kind of start to think, okay, well, maybe today I'm in the mood for a bourbon. Maybe today yeah. I'm in the mood for something smoking. Maybe today I'm in the mood for something sweet. Right. That's kind of, and that's, that's the kind of the point. Like it's, it's all, based on moods or what you're feeling like, or even you can have, I could have this today and be madly in love with it. And a couple of days, try it again. Like, okay, I'm not feeling this right yeah. now, but try something else and it really strikes you. So like, I think uh, that just proved my whole, our whole job here obsolete. <laughs> like, oh, it's great, but you might, you might, everyone has a different experience. I guess, it's been a great point. job though. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, it's it, listen. You'll never hear me complain. Mm-hmm. Um, this absolutely. Is, this has been great. Okay. I think it's Let's, I think it's old tub giveaway time. I think you're right. All Let's right. Do it. Um, so again, Donner Pass whiskey. We're adding you. Uh, we'll hook you up next round. Yeah. Um, I got. Yeah, you, you're gonna have to go into yeah. our emails. Um, oh, so sure. anyone that's a, a patron of ours, you would besides Donner Pass whiskey, um, you would have got an email today with your uh, lottery numbers in it. And uh, I guess uh, go to uh, Patreon there. Sorry, we'll just be a moment while we work this uh, uh, draw here. Go to patreon.com slash trying our Patreon page. Sorry, he's unfamiliar with our Patreon page. (laughs) That's fine. I'm not, um, I'm not the techie one. Let me here. go through the comments here and see if there's any other questions while we... Uh, scotch is still king, okay? Um, it is true, though. Like, if you go to any liquor store, there's still, like... Let's hope it there's is. still, like, shelves and shelves of scotch, and then there's still, like, one shelf of bourbon. Oh, yeah. it's. I mean, look, it's it still has a ways to go, but it's getting there. Let's make this verify oh, the device. Sakes. <laughs> Why do we need to go on Patreon? We just need to see the numbers. No, it's not on the email. The email went through Patreon. Uh, sorry, everyone. Okay, you got to verify the device or something. Anyway, um, yeah. So uh, let's see what. Oh, we got Joel Gossman on here. Oh, we got Lions Den on here. I already mentioned Swami. I don't want to talk about him too much. Uh, yeah, we got a lot of our. Uh, oh, Whiskey A is here. Rare Bird. Oh, Rare Bird had a comment too. I gotta go find that one. Uh oh, he was at, he Rare Bird One Hundred One was asking about the um about the Booker's Rye coming back, right? Uh, uh, 
choose. All right. Um, I don't know where you want to go on here. Yeah, you're doing great. You're doing okay, great. Okay, I figured out. I found the page. Well, we promise we're giving this away. We promise. Yeah, they're not. They told me they weren't going to do it. <laughs> well, we're waiting. Let's just crack this and uh, try it out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you win. You win a one at sample. <laughs> between one. And Actually, you had a bit of a story to tell us about the old tub with um sure with yeah oldest, like what like what it actually yeah so it's it's weird it's like simultaneously our oldest and newest whiskey um so before there was jim beam it was old tub that was the brand the family made oh they lost the licensing rights to the name during prohibition so when they came back after prohibition they couldn't they could still make the same whiskey but couldn't use the name mm. so it turned into well james b beams originally and then uh jim beam but now we're kind of getting back to it so like that brand is that brand was first introduced in like 1820 something wow um that's kind of cool i mean like you know at one point the distillery was called the old tub distillery like it's it's a yeah. it's a really and really important whiskey for us and actually we got like it came so, out for us at the um annual spirit release last yeah, year that's right, and BC, yeah we picked uh we picked up a bottle quite quickly crushed it and then we 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 like is it sticking around is it in the main lineup now or yeah so i think right now is uh kind of the same as the the, the basil 10 um you know we're, we're looking at it probably being a one time a year release okay. uh, the great thing about it is that you know with it being a one time year release most markets got what they wanted from it you know what I mean? Like we can kind of tell pretty quickly whether something's going to, you know, Blow sell through now, it. but if we gave them twice the amount, we wouldn't go through twice the amount. Yeah. Um, but, you know, hopefully we'll get maybe a little bit more so that maybe more buyers can have it because we did launch it in the middle of the pandemic. Right. So we right. didn't have yeah. to worry about how, how much of it buyers and restaurants are going to pull through. Yeah. Um, Cause I think it's mostly gone now here in BC well, anyway. BC, yeah. Has... But the, the new orders should have be going in actually should be in already. So delivery okay, cool. should be within the next little while. One of the things that's kind of strikes me about this and maybe it's just, I don't know if the, the mash style or whatever is a traditional one of when it was called old tub or what the deal is, but it gives you a lot of great info on the bottle, which mm -hmm. I think like mm -hmm. the average, well, the, or the experienced consumer wants to see it's chill filtered yeah which is very cool it's so bottled and that bond, oil, so you, oiliness yeah and the nice mouthfeel bottled and bond so it's it's got age statement basically yeah and, and it says sour mash on here so yeah. there's like a couple of like key words that people might be looking for yeah. which is pretty cool as, as far as the uh the treatment to it it undergoes the exact same treatment bookers does as far yeah. as filtering very cool um but yeah, and that's like I mean, for a long time. I think I might have a. I had it here somewhere. Actually, where did that go? Oh, it's in there somewhere. Um, Gosh, we did. Yeah. We did have like little three seventy five mils that we sold of old oh. just at the distillery. Mm -hmm. um, but this one we kind of changed it up a little bit. The filtration being the main thing that we've changed out of it. Mm -hmm. well, um, but yeah, I think a really, really, really cool whiskey. It's, I love it. I think it's great. I actually poured we myself. <laughs> We're finally ready to do this draw, and I don't do want to. I don't want to forget to talk about one other thing. Sorry, people. Psych. Um, is I love Devil's Cut, but you oh, yeah. rarely <laughs> see that around anymore. Yeah, you won't. No, is it done? Yeah. Oh, we gotta get some. Of yeah, it's been done. It's been as far as production has been for a while. while. Yeah. yeah. Um, like it, there's there is as far as Canada goes, there's still. I wouldn't say a considerable amount, but there's still some left in the country. Uh, same with the double oak, same with the bonded. Well, maybe not as much bonded. Um, but you're going to see with all of our portfolios, you're going to see them being reined in a little bit. So double oak, bonded, and uh, Devil's, Devil's Cut are done. Uh, those three, yeah, we're not going to see any new deliveries of those coming to Canada. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're buying those. Okay, we love the, all of those. But yeah, they, those those were a part of some of our blind tastings too. Yeah, 
They're great. And actually, I think I chose the double oak for the and winner, and you double oak's incredible. It was Devil's Cut. Yeah, yeah. No. double anyway. oak is, is nuts. Okay. Let's let let's get to the bottle. We shall buy them. Okay, here we go. Um, who is gonna win the old tub? Here we go. We have the randomizer application. We have numbers from one to four hundred and seventy-two, and anyone that we forgot, we really dearly apologize, and we shall give you extra numbers next time around. Boop. 417. Okay, you are the winner. 417. Everybody can go to the email and they can find out for themselves probably faster than we can, but... Am I going to our hotmail or what? No, you're going to go back to Patreon. Okay. And, um, just 417 is going to be... Christine Deems, Christine Daisy. Hey, that's about time. She's been around. She deserves it. She's, she, been, she's been one around. of our Congrats. longest Ram Club members, and I don't think she's ever won oh, yeah. anything. I don't well, think that's she's awesome. ever won anything. Yeah. Nice. Um, nice. So, Christine Deems, Christine Daisy, congratulations. <laughs> um, this is this is yours. The special Trini and C edition slash just a sticker we put on there. Um, old tub bourbon. Uh, we do personally love the old tub we've crushed some of it ourselves and um yeah it's yeah. great stuff it's, it's great, great stuff. stuff you're really gonna so enjoy. congratulations we normally have a banner and like people singing yeah. in the crowd but oh yeah. COVID, no. yeah, it's <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> something um so, so we may as well wrap it up yeah. i guess um ray why don't you stay on the line we're gonna say goodbye to our dram clubbers thank you for joining us tonight sure it's I did want to plug fun. one thing if I can. And, yes, and, please, and please, please plug away, plug away. Sure. So coming up on June 14th, Monday, June 14th is National Bourbon Day, which is generally only really celebrate within the States. This year, the Distilled Spirits Council of the U.S. are actually putting um, like a considerable amount of effort into like including Canada in it, mm -hmm. which is actually a pretty big win for our market as far as American spirits go. Um, they have set up a national website for us here in Canada. So if you go to, to uh, the three W's dot cheers, American spirits, is that right? No. Nope. Wow. <laughs> it is. It is. Hang on. It's okay. Cheers. Is... Cheers. Spirits from the USA.com. They, cheers. they tried to make it. They tried to make it longer. They couldn't. Uh, cheers. Spirits from the USA.com. Uh, you'll you'll see all of your local bars, restaurants, whatever that have signed oh. up to take part in it. All of them will be doing some sort of package to celebrate it, whether it's a tasting flight, whether it's a cocktail to go kit, whatever it is. Out in the East Coast, there are some live tastings happening. Um, so if this is really a way for us to be able to drive some stuff back to the bars and restaurants who have supported us for years and years and years and years and are now kind of in need for our support. So I highly encourage you to go to that website, check out the map, click wherever you're from on that map. Hopefully you know where it is. If not, you're in trouble. And <laughs> just find whatever your local bar or restaurant is and you know help them out a little bit. And we're also going to do a big, large cheers all across Canada at 8 p.m. Eastern time on um, Zoom, I think. So, yeah, check out the website. It's a really, really, really cool cause. Um, Perfect. Yeah, that's all I got. And if, and if you want to send any info that we can pass on to our people 100%. on our Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and all that, then let's, sure. let's, let's pass that cheers along for sure. Yeah. Great. That sounds yeah, awesome. Sure. Yeah. Well, cool. thanks so much, Ray, and thanks for everybody that tuned hey, in. Hey, thank and, you all uh, very, very much. Yeah, and stick around for a sec, Ray, and we will, uh, we will shut her down and click like, subscribe. Leave a comment, and we will see you again next month. Trust me, we got some cool stuff next month. We got some cool stuff the following month. We got we're lined up for months with cool stuff. So, so. maybe not as cool as Jim Beam, but still pretty cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. See you, everybody.